Hello beautiful people and welcome back to my channel. As you can see from the title of today's video, it is finally my updated boob job Q&A. So I have been getting questions about this since pretty much I um, had my boobs done. I gave you guys some updates on my Instagram, on some stories and stuff, but I haven't actually done a full video to explain how it all went. Um, first of all, I was really, really happy. Absolutely loved my surgeon. He is amazing. His name is Dr. Vessels and he's from One Cosmetic. They are in Sydney. Um, about 45 minutes from the city, I would say, or like 45 minutes from Bondi. Um, but they're amazing. All the girls there are amazing, especially Chelsea. She just made the whole experience a million times better. So first of all, big thank you to them. Okay, so where do I start? So I gave you guys quite a lot of updates, but I'm kind of going to go as if I haven't given you guys any updates and this is just me talking about it all. So first, um... Maybe a week I was on the medication. I think I stopped, I'm pretty sure it was after four days I stopped um, the medication, which was really good. And then um, I had a little bit of Panadol just a bit after that, but not too much. I was off my medicine really quickly. Um, the first two weeks were pretty crappy. I didn't really do much. I was really lucky to have Mitch who looked after me quite a lot. If you didn't have someone looking after you 24 seven like he was, it would be a bit more difficult, I would say. It was really good and he was really helpful. Uh, so I kind of just stayed in bed for two weeks. Well, I didn't really stay in bed for two weeks actually. I just stayed, you know, watching a movie, going to bed, you know, just very lazy for the first two weeks. I actually, after 10 days, went to his graduation though. Um, and I was out of my compression bra for a little bit. You guys would have seen photos. That was at about the 10 day mark. And then I put my compression bra on later. Um, it wasn't very pleasant to be honest because, um, being out of it, I was like, I didn't feel like I was supported. I was like, oh my God, they're going to fall out of my chest. But, um, it was totally fine. So if any of you are wanting to go to something important like that, pretty close to your surgery, I would say you should be fine, but just be careful. You don't want to like, you know overextend or do something silly or whatever. I didn't drive for that same amount of time. I didn't drive for 10 days. Um, and when I first started driving, the only thing that was difficult was kind of like turning corners and going like that because you're just moving that muscle. Um, but apart from that, that was sweet. I didn't really drive too much until about three weeks, but yeah, I did drive a few times. I would say four weeks is when you're feeling a whole lot better. I don't want to scare people by saying that. Honestly, after two weeks, I was really okay, but I was still just like, oh, I can't reach up there. I couldn't close my boots. So I got stuck. I went to see my friend. I went to have a sleepover at my friend's house actually, and I couldn't shut my boots. I lifted it up and I was like, oh shit. So yeah, you can't just like lift above. I don't think I actually put my arms above my head for probably maybe like eight weeks, to be honest. I didn't put them up for quite a long time. I didn't work out, I didn't go to the gym, I didn't go for any walks, um, I didn't do anything for a while. I just wanted to heal really well and then get on with that. Six weeks is when most people can stop wearing their compression bra. I was supposed to wear my compression bra for 12 weeks because I had smooth implants. So also if you're wondering what I got, I got Mativa Ergonomics. That was the type of implant I got. They are a smooth implant um, and I got 260cc. So the ergonomics, the best way to explain it is it's like a teardrop implant, but it's a bit higher at the top. So I wanted it to be teardrop and then to like kind of, you know, not be too high up on my chest. That's just what we decided based on the shapes of my boobs prior. Remember, if you're thinking, like I have a lot of questions from people saying, I want exactly what your boobs are. What size did you get? What shape did you get? It does really depend on what you have before, what size, what shape you know, everything. So make sure you do really talk to your surgeon. Take into consideration what I got if you do like the shape of my boobs or the size or whatever, but really do also listen to what your surgeon says um, because that's what I did. I had no idea what I was going in for when I first went in, but yeah, here we are. Also, my big thing, which is the reason why I literally didn't get my boobs done for such a long time, is I was super scared of um, not being able to sleep on my stomach because I'm like a stomach start side sleeper, if that makes sense. I sleep on my side, but my chest is flat. I have one on under this pillow and Mitch's pillow, and then my legs are like scissored, if that makes sense. Weird, but um, that's how I sleep. So I was really worried about not being able to do that. I was honestly fine with it. A couple of times I spat the dummy and I was like, this is bullshit. Like I just want to lay on my stomach and I couldn't get to sleep. But um, yeah, only a few times, honestly, I was really okay. And now I've noticed I don't actually sleep like I don't actually want to sleep 
that way anymore, which is really, really weird. But I do definitely sleep on my side now. And I have sort of started to sleep on my side, but like my boobs are squished, if that makes sense. Um, which is fine. I do kind of notice if I've woken up and I'm like flat on my chest, I'm like, oh, I was like, that's a little bit tight or whatever. But yeah, it's really not an issue and um, you just get used to it. Like you've got to do it. You've got no way around it. You can't just sleep on your stomach two weeks after your surgery. So you just get over and go to sleep. Um, I started sleeping on my side again at probably 12 weeks and then that was like side slash sort of stomach. Um, I get massages and whatever now. I just put an extra pillow under here just so that it's like propped up if that makes sense but yeah that's all fine that was nice in Bali being able to get massages again oh the thing that did save me actually when it came to like sleeping and whatever was the neck pillow I literally used that neck pillow that I got from relax and recover for I don't even know like four three four weeks probably I used it for such a long time and that really helps because you can imagine if you're sleeping like this and your head falls that way, you're going to get a sore neck. So if you've got the neck pillow, just like if you're on a plane, if you've got a neck pillow, it kind of like helps you. So definitely invest in a neck pillow. Also, if you are wanting to have surgery, I'm going to pop the box on the screen as well that I got. Um, but I got the Platinum Pack from Relax and Recover. It was an absolute lifesaver. It had everything in it that I needed. It had the neck pillow, which I wouldn't have even known was a thing until I got the pack. It had um, some Movicol sachets, just so you're still, you know, going to the toilet regularly and all of that, which again, I wouldn't have even thought of. So it had the ice packs, which were absolutely amazing. It had these boob circle shaped ice packs, and then it had these rectangle ones here as well. So that was really good. Um, in a big pack, you get like a decent amount of those. It had some vitamin E cream, because you're supposed to put cream on your boobs and like massage them and stuff. Uh, it did also have, I nearly forgot, Gamofen soap. So that's like an antibacterial medical grade kind of soap. You definitely need to use that to wash your hands all the time, wash the area underneath. The few days prior, I actually used that soap. Just I didn't have any tan on my body. I made sure I got that all like, you know, weeks prior. But I definitely scrubbed it a lot. So I didn't have any tan residue or anything like under my boobs when I was going into surgery. But that Gamofen soap is really important and it comes in the pack. Um, dry shampoo as well because you know what you're not going to be washing your hair Mitch washed my hair probably three times but it wasn't for a this is what I mean by him helping me out really did help um, but it was definitely a couple of weeks before I actually washed my hair myself because you just can't really get them up that high you just you sort of like this you just feel like a bit of an idiot but it's totally fine like honestly it was I scared myself more than I needed to like it was really really fine um, they are super squishy now. Uh, I don't know if you can really see that well on this top, but they are super squishy. They move like they feel like they're a bit harder, but they feel somewhat like real boobs. My scars as well. I have been getting a lot of questions about my scars. I'm going to pop a photo on here for you guys to see. Um, lots of people were requesting to see that. They are definitely not as red as they used to be. The incisions are really small and tiny, which is good. He did a really good job with the stitching. This one is completely flat, and this one is like slightly a little bit raised. Um, I don't know why. I have had keloid scars on my body in the past, just from like blisters and stuff. Like I've got keloids on my feet from blisters, which is just so stupid. Years of clubbing when I was younger. Um, but yeah, just make sure you use your tape. So One Cosmetic actually gives you tape after. So at the start, you keep on the tape that they have for, I think it was two weeks, they'll tell you all this, but I think it was two weeks you leave what they have on, you then take that off, and then you start putting um, Micropore on and you change it every single day, I think maybe till six weeks. And then after that, you put the silicone tape that they gave you. And I think that one is to stop the redness and stop like it being raised. So yeah, I definitely use that one heaps. After that, I started using silicon tape and vitamin E oil. I'm going to pop it on the screen. Um, I used this when I burnt my butt on a scooter, actually. Um, so yeah, this one's a good one as well. I alternated that and the tapes. Now, I do a little bit of both as well, but I'm going to be honest with you, I forget quite a lot, which is really naughty. But um, if I put the tape on, it'll last for five days, and that's sweet. But then I tend to forget for two days, and then I'll put the cream on for two days, and then, you know... The, the sheets back on for five days. So that's kind of where I'm at right now at the five month mark. They are still definitely red, um, 
but they're not that red. I also keep them out of the sun. Sun is so bad when it comes to scars. You do not want to put your scars in the sun um, because it will just make them red and raised and a lot worse. So I always put sunscreen on them. I always make sure my bra is covering them. Um, and yeah, I just don't get them in the sun. So don't ever do that. But yeah, the scars are going really well. I might also give you guys another update in another couple of months just to show you how they are going. Um, but they definitely do stay red for six weeks. And then after that, that six to 12 weeks is still quite red. But then after that, that's when they start to lighten off. But yeah, it's not really anything that bothers me. And they're just going to lighten off as time goes on. Because you got to remember, you had a big invasive surgery and they've just sliced you the hell open. So, you know, your body's got to heal it. But all in all, I'm really happy with how the surgery went. Um, if any of you guys have any more questions about it, then feel free to pop it in the comment section below and I will definitely be answering them. I get so many DMs about it and I try to answer some like on my Instagram, but they just get lost and it's just really hard because I get that many a day. So if you do have a question, then pop it in the comments here um, and I will make sure that I do answer them on here. My biggest tips are after surgery, if you're just wanting to know that, is to take your medications exactly when you're supposed to at the start. So for the first four days when I was having all the medications, I would have it every four to five hours. Mitch had set alarms at night to give me the medication. And then that way I kind of stayed on top of it. The issue is when your pain gets out of control, unless you've got like a low pain threshold, then you're probably just gonna be stuffed anyway. But if you are taking your medications like every four hours, you're keeping on top of it and it's not gonna kind of, you know, your pain's not gonna get out of control. So make sure you do that. Make sure you ice heaps. I iced so, so much the first week like heaps and heaps and heaps, um, especially the first two days. That's when you need to be icing a lot and keeping the swelling down. Also, don't freak out at the start if you think they look really big or you think they look really small. Mine, to be honest, I don't know, they were really square and they kind of looked smaller than what they are now. They were like square and like kind of went out here and then they sort of turn into a circle and they drop and they get like real fluffy as you can see they move and stuff so yeah um don't be scared at the start that is not the actual shape of what your boobs are going to be later so yeah um just give it time and yeah let me know if you have any other questions i think i hopefully answered everything but i will pop the details for my surgeon and the clinic that i went to in the description i'll also put the relax and recover packs that really really did help me and then i will put um what i got back in the description as well in case you guys have forgotten but make sure you comment any questions that you do have i hope this video was informative um, and helped you guys a little bit and i'll see you in my next video